Krishna, I am praying to you that you are serving Radhika and playing with Radhika. I want that where you are playing and serving Radhika. You should take me at once there. If you are Dwarka, oh, when I will see, I will fly there. If you are not in pressure with Radhika, oh, then I will not go. Where Radhika is there, I will go there. So please take me very far with Radhika. I know that you cannot give up Radhika for a second because Radhika and Krishna are same. So pray, pray like this. But after some time, what we can? Rupa and Sanatana also, AJ, the left foot. And then we can go to And then he used to tell what? Sunyayate Mahagostam, Onandaka, Varsana and all the places. Vrindavan all, ghost. Now, the barren land. Oh, like now. Marukumi, barren land. Desert. And Giridham, Ajivarayate. All the Krishna, the Raj where the Krishna portions were done in Punya, every Punya. Now it looks like a Python. Python. And this Kunda, Fire Kunda, I think. Like tiger over oh, here. Sometimes. Oh. Lying down, sometimes crying and thus. And at that time, Jiva Goswami was there. Krishna Das Kapriya, Jiva Goswami came and he saw Prabhupada Das Kapriya. And he took all the things which he has collected from Saruk Damodar in Karcha. And what he has made and what he received from Rupa Goswami. Everything. And he gave to Krishna Das Kapriya. And thus it was written in so the Chaitanya Chaitanya, the essence of all the three pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ravana. But how to receive all these things? This object, high object, now come down. Vāsho Vegam, Manasah Krodha Vegam, Jīva Vegam, Gopastha Vegam, Vekaan Vekaan Ja Vishadeta Sa Sarabham Apimam Pratyavi Sa Shishya What meaning, you know? You know? Remember or not? If you can understand it. Jnana Tivra Vasya Jnana Jnana Salakya Chakshana Miritam Yena Tasma Isri Guru Veda Nama Now come to process. In the last time I am giving you process. I have told you about our amen object of our Sadhana Bhajan and life. Very high. If you want to achieve, be Raghunath Das Goswami. Follow him. This is the process which is described in the Rupa Goswami party in Sri Upadesa Amrita. Unless we follow this, we are not really, as we heard yesterday, in Sadhu Sangha. This is the real meaning of hearing, that we take it to heart and follow these instructions. Every day we can examine how we are following this. Bhatsho Vega, Manasakrauda Vega, Jiva Vega, Mudra Opashta Vega. Eitam Vegan Yo Visaheta Dira, Sarvama Kimam Priti Vim, Sashishya. The material body which we have received, human form of life, is the perfect boat by which we can cross this ocean of material existence. Always we are <coughs> suffering in this material world by the urges which are there within the body. What is the main urge? The urge of speech, mind, senses, the taste, tongue, eyes, the genitals, all these urges, they are binding the living entity like ropes yeah, around our neck, always we are suffering. We all experience this, being in this material world. Only when we can take shelter at the lotus feet of those devotees who are free from these urges, 
then we can also overcome these urges. And how to take shelter? By following their instructions. Sri Rupa Swami Pad is explaining here, the mind is always wandering here and there. The tongue is very, no backbone, the other tongue. So always loose. Talking at any time. What talking? Nonsense. Very easily, if we are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, oh, where have you been? How have you heard about this person? At once the tongue starts to speak. Mind is not fixed. Then the tongue always wants to taste so many nice things, good preparations. It has no interest in respecting properly prasada. Now we want to taste prasada for our own sense gratification to satisfy the belly. Yeah. And then overeating, so many problems are coming. And then so much pressure, and then always thinking about how to satisfy yeah, the, the, the genitals. Yeah. So this problem is there for all conditioned souls. And they think this is the goal of our life, to enjoy, eat, be merry. Yeah. Not understanding that in the end, yeah, you'll simply die. And what then? Next life. Again, and when will you again get this human form of life? It is not certain. For sure, if you've committed so many bad activities, not following properly the instructions of the Vedic literatures, not hearing, not having any interest in visiting sadhus, hearing from them, pleasing them, serving them. Again, next life, we may be our dog, cat, mouse, anything, yeah? and when we will again attain the human form, human form of life, it is not sure. So therefore, we have to take advantage of this human form of life and at once start to listen and follow the proper process in order to attain that beautiful goal which we hear from the Lord of Jesus Sri Gurudev. What is that goal? How should the Reverend Das Goswami attain perfection? Yeah? Attaining the most beautiful loving moods of the main servants of Srimati Radhika, completely selfless. For these urges, we have to be very careful how to control our mind. Only when we engage the mind day and night in eating, chanting, taking shelter, following the angas of pure bhakti or sarup siddha bhakti, in order to manifest our real Thank you. Spiritual transcendent of the one is low and explain the meaning. Not so detailed. <laughs> The second verse of Sri Upanishamrita is Atyahara Prayashas Cha Prajalpo Niyamagraha Jana Sangas Cha Dolyam Cha Shadhir Bhakti Vinashati Atyahara Atyahara means to overeat. This doesn't just mean with the tongue, but it means with all senses. It also means to accumulate or collect more than is necessary. Prayasa means to endeavor, to over-endeavor, to put energy and time into activities and projects which have nothing to do with bhakti. Prajalpa means to engage in mundane talk. For a materialist, Certain kinds of conversation are very pleasing to the senses. However, these kind of talks are very detrimental to bhakti, and inevitably they also lead lead us to commit aparad or offences against Vaishnavas. Jana Sangha. Jana Sangha means to associate to engage to associate with persons who are not pure devotees, that is, with materialists, especially persons who are overly attached to the opposite sex. So for a man, someone, another man who is too overly attached to a woman, and vice versa, 
for, for women. It also means to associate with Maya bodies, Aparadis, and all other persons who will affect our heart and take us away from the line of bhakti. Niyamagraha. Niyamagraha has two meanings. Niyama Agraha and Niyama Agraha. Niyama Agraha means to be indifferent to the rules and regulations which are delineated in Shastra for our purification. Niyama Agraha, on the other hand, means to place overemphasis on the rules and regulations. In other words, to adhere to the rules and regulations, but not but consider them to be an end in themselves. These rules and regulations have a particular purpose to help us advance in bhakti. But the rules and regulations in and of themselves are not the end result that we try to achieve. For instance, if we're engaged in chanting Harinam and a highly elevated Vaishnav comes into the assembly, like our Gurudev, Shiva Shukadev Gosang Maharaj, or Narada Muni, and we think, no, I will continue chanting, my round isn't finished. This is overemphasis on rules and regulations without considering what we are actually trying to achieve through these rules and regulations. Lolyam, the last of the six um, acti activities or traits which destroy bhakti. Lolyam means greed or restlessness of the mind. This means the inclination to accept useless opinions which are averse to bhakti. So, Shuddha Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada in his Anubhriti to, to this verse explains that one's mind, if, one's, if one is fickle-minded, one becomes like a prostitute, sometimes going on the path of karma, sometimes the path of jnana. And in this way, one doesn't develop nishta, one doesn't develop shraddha for, for bhakti. These six, these six ways of behaving destroy bhakti. And Sri Rupa Goswami Pad in this verse says very clearly that we must reject them. <laughs> We should um, endeavor in bhakti with great enthusiasm, always um, being very glad to perform these bhakti activities and giving our hearts to them. And in this way, we can experience some joy while doing it and not feel that we're forcing ourselves or because this process is uh, very joyfully performed and is a great gift that's been given to us. So we should always feel great um, appreciation and enthusiasm in performing the following the instructions that Guru has given us and, and seeing this process as, as a, a great privilege to perform. So be very enthusiastic in our daily practices and we should be brief, brief. very determined we should be very, very determined to, to follow these and not let ourselves be deviated or um, no. oh, confidence. Follow, follow with great confidence that we will achieve the goal and that we will get the result that we want from engaging in bhakti activities. Uh, be, uh, be very patient. This will be prepared. You, just me. Not so much. We want to go all the slopes. Utsaha nischaya tariya. 
to be very enthusiastic while engaging in devotional service. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yena Mamu Payantite. Those who engage in Priti Purva come always serving in great happiness. To him I give the understanding by which he can come to me, not one who serves in disgust or without enthusiasm. Nishchiyat means confidence or conviction that I'm engaged in following the instructions in the proper line of service under proper guidance so Krishna will surely accept me and help me advance in bhakti. Daryat means patience. Even if one does not achieve success immediately, he should proceed on the path with patience. In the Bhagavad Gita, our Śrīla Prabhupāda gives the example of the sparrow. The sparrow laid her eggs on the shore of the ocean, and the ocean swallowed up the eggs. So the sparrow uh, was so determined that she was going to even drink up that ocean, but what can a sparrow do? So Garuda himself, who's the king of birds, came and he himself threatened the ocean that if you don't give back the eggs, I myself will swallow you. So the ocean gave back the eggs. So if we're determined to follow, then Krishna and Guru and Vaishnavas and all Guru Prampara will help us. Tat Tat Karma Pravartanat. One should follow the regulative principles of devotional service, particularly the nine uh, processes of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, hearing and chanting about Krishna, remembering him, serving his lotus feet, going on parikrama, offering prayers, following the order, becoming a friend and surrendering everything. 64 types of bhakti, 9 types, the essence 5 types, then 3, and then the main one of chanting Hare Krishna and the association of pure devotees. Then, Sangha Tyaga, one should avoid the association of non-devotees. In Chaitanya Charitamrita is explained that who is the non-devotee? One who is attached to women or men and maya bodies and non-devotees. One should avoid that type of association. And on the contrary, Satovrte. One should follow in the footsteps of Sato or Sadhus. There's two kinds of Sadhus. One is Grihastha and one is Renuncia. If one is in the renounced order, he follows the bhajan and the means of livelihood of those who are in the renounced order, as Srila Gurudev and other devotees were explaining about Raghunath Das Goswami. The other day was the disappearance day of Srimati Gangamata Goswamini. On her appearance day, Srila Gurudev said, all ladies should follow Gangamata Goswamini in her renunciation and Janava Thakurani and those who are in men's bodies should follow Shri Raghunath Das Goswami. And those who are householders should follow the bhajan and means of livelihood of householders, such as Srivas Thakur or the Pandavas. Satovrte and Satbir Bhakti Prashiditi. These are the six items that are recommended to follow. Previous were to renounce. These are to follow. In this way, one will advance very rapidly on the path of bhakti. So, <clears throat> this first I should about Swami but uh, giving us a very a basis of how we can progress in bhakti. Sometimes we hear so much nectar from Gurudev and the Vaishnavas, and we wonder where has it gone to? It's because we have holes where this is leaking out from. So these are the different holes, these Vajavagam, the pushings of the, the senses uh, that have been talked about, over-collecting, etc. And how we uh, can free ourselves from these holes, where how it, it, bhakti leaks out from uh, from our hearts, is by throwing them out with association devotees. So this verse of Shiva Goswami Pada is instructions how to associate with such devotees. By offering gifts in charity, didati, prati grinati, when the Vaishnava comes, you serve him. 
and you see what his needs are, and you give him an offering, anything he wants, uh, foodstuffs, you give him foodstuffs at different types, you give him different uh, massages, you give him uh, uh, clothing, you give him whatever food, whatever he requires for his maintenance, uh, whatever he is uh, in need of, you give that to him. You inquire uh, submissively from him about confidential subject matter, and you reveal your mind to him confidentially. In, so, in six different classes of, of association with, association with devotees, In, in this way, by associating with devotees, our minds become free from our anarthas. By associating with mundane and materialistic personalities, gradually our, uh, we develop those qualities. And by associating association with uh, devotees, especially the pure devotee, their qualities will gradually manifest within us. If a mayavadi, impersonalist, comes to you, and he wants something to eat or drink. What should I do? So, Jana Sangas Jalolim Chow, we have to give up worldly uh, association, especially association of uh, those who are engaged in the process of Mayavadi philosophy uh, and the uh, Buddhist philosophy. By taking the remnants of our pushas and engaging in one of these processes of devotion, of uh, these six exchanges of love with uh, materialists and with the Mayavadis, then that is very dangerous for our your, If your father, if you are a family person, if your father, brother, or other, they are not true devotees, what should you be? Should you give some prasadam or any requirement or not? Sometimes we have a sentimental uh, tendency. We, we need to associate uh, with persons to give them uh, our association, not to take their association. We have to be very clear about this. We, so don't, we, not, we don't take their association, but we, we give them our association. We should not, if he is non devotee then we should not give him clothing, prasadam, or other things or not. Because yes, we can give them uh, necessities uh, out of compassion, out, out of uh, a welfare mentality. Being kind to others is a process of, of bhakti. But we don't become entangled with attachment to them and take absorb their qualities. But we give Thank them... Thank you. Should If comes, and if he wants something, at once give. But don't associate. Give prasadam. Without love and affection, without attachment. But surely you should be. Otherwise, you are not perfect. If your father and mother are not devoted, still you should do, but not be attached. And if any Vaishnava comes, then what should we do? With attachment, with love and affection, that my pran, my life has come. In this way, attachment is the root of all events. So, if Mahabadi comes and beg something, you should give, like a beggar. But don't be attached. Oh, you are very good. Fine, you can do all this. Don't do This will make you attack me. Then, what? Krishna is so powerful. Krishna is just a big Krishna is just a big deal. Krishna is just a big deal. Who will? 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 Krishna is just a but uh, no, 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 no,
in this verse, Sri Lanka Goswami Pada explains the Madhum Adhikari, how will behavior with the devotees, Kanishti Adhikari, Madhum Adhikari, and also Kutta Adhikari. In this verse, very nicely, Sri Lanka Goswami Pada explains, Krishneti Jasagri Tangmana Satri, wants to chant the holy names. Bachi now, Bachi now takes her to lotus feet of any bonafide guru or any sampradaya. So you will give respect in your mind. But here Bhakti Vinod Thakur in this part would explain. He chants the holy names, he completes your divorce of three things. His mind is not contaminated with mayabhav, and he is not associated with the ladies, and he is not associated with the ladies, and associated with the three courses. Those were the associated with the ladies. Three sanghas, three sanghas, three sanghas, Krishna Bhakti. Yeah, so he, if he chants the holy name, you also give respect in your mind. Then, then explain Krishna Jasutta Mandir, the Khasti Chet, when he receives mantra from Bona Phaili Guru, which in or any Sampradaya, uh, not only Gaudiya Sampradaya, any Sampradaya, then pure Sampradaya, pure Sampradaya, he belongs, he belongs to a pure Shnav Sampradaya. Vaishnav, Vaishnav Sampradaya. You give respect here and have you do pranam. You go to trust it until you lotus feet. But here we will not have to go to the temple of Prabhupada in this part, but also explain it. The Khaspi Chet, in this part, in the part, he also gives the emphasis. The Khaspi Chet, but he has not received the Samanda again. So he gives same respect as the people, the ones who chant the holy names, but not and develops in Sampradaya's participation in one of the Buddha's ideas. And when he realizes Samanda Gyan, that time he will be pranam. This is the Dikhati Pranam. So, Susurusva Bhajanta Isam, Susurusha Bhajanta Isam. Bhajanta Isam. Ananda Ninnadi Sunnam, Hidat Kirsita Sangalatha. This is very important in this part. Sri Lanka Goswami Pad explained, you will associate and serve one of the Guru, who is completely free from all types of material attachment. And in 24 hours, he absorbed in three past times of the Radha and Krishna. And you try to serve his lotus feet and try to realize his heart mood. He never criticized any person. never criticized any
chanting pure name from God. That's what we should do. We should respect like Dandavat Pranam and also by mind. Why first has been told to respect by mind? Don't, he should not be, you should not do pranam to them. Those who have no diksha and they are asat lakshan he, but they are chanting. You should respect mali by my Why? There is some reason. And that reason that if he will do pranam, then all will do pranam and thus your bhakti will go away. Keep it in mind that oh, one day he will be pure. So mind not doing pranam, not taking prasadam with him, but rest, give rest. Don't uh, 